Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's topic is vectors and the dot product. Okay, vectors are extremely useful ways of doing calculations quickly that would otherwise take way too long. So that's why we want to pay some special attention to this. First of all, I want to talk about the basics on a pre-vector and put a visual in your head on it, okay? I've got a vector V, and um, they don't really call it free vectors, and for some reason or other, it's kind of confused on the homework over at Newton that keeps on wanting to call them position vectors or something like that, which is actually a different thing. But they'll call this um, free vectors, and it's, it's they're actually free vectors, okay? And I'll explain why. But the basics here, first of all, let's look at a vector V. So here's my vector V. And it goes from a point A to a point B on the plane, or wherever. I can do this in three space or however many. Okay, that's good. All right. And now we are going to uh, recognize two pieces. We have a tail on the vector and the head. If we're going from A to B, A is the tail, B is the head. All right, and we're looking at the vector goes from A to B. Now we call this a free vector because we call it the same vector no matter where we find it on the plane. So it can it's free to move around the plane, and the thing that stays constant with it is the direction of the vector and the length of the vector. So if I move it three units right or move it up or down or whatever like that, it's still the same vector. I can't change its direction. All these are copies of V. These are all like looking vectors of V, right? Here's V and there's V and there's V. All these are still V. That's still V. No matter where we find it on the plane, it's still V. Now, part of the notation is normally if you're doing typesetting, we would put V in bold face. Okay? We would put V in bold face. Why is it saying that it's recording messages in this chat? Well, you know what? I bet when I'm going to check that later and see exactly what that means, but I know that's not showing up on YouTube. I need to check. That. Okay, I'll check that later and see what's going on with that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at a particular vector from A to B. Okay. And what you always want to think about is old and new because the thing you're always going to be looking for in all your math and science classes is this difference between the old and the new. And the difference is often usually a actual, actual arithmetic difference where difference is the result of a subtraction. Well, we'll subtract one from the other and the difference is new minus old. Occasionally, we'll be looking at things where you're looking at a proportional difference, and we'll talk about new divided by old. But new minus old, new divided by old, those are always the things. It's, it's comparing new to old, starting with the new, which is at the head, and the old, which is at the tail. Here. And we can think of these as just directed line segments. Okay? So to get an idea of what we're talking about, let's start out with two points on a plane, A and B, and figure out what the vector going from A to B is, okay? I want to find right now a representation of the vector B from A to B, and so I think B minus A. In math, it's the same thing, subtracting is the same thing as adding the negative, and in fact, it is always better to add the negative not because it makes a difference in the math, but because it helps out avoiding sign errors. Okay? If you calculate negative A, you're unlikely to make a mistake. And when you're adding, you're unlikely to make a mistake. Um, sign errors often happen when you take a negative minus a negative, and you get confused on how many negatives you get in there. And you can avoid that by always adding. 
adding a negative if you need to by calculating the negative first. So here we go. Let's go for this. Here is B. And here I've got the two vectors that were starting at 3, negative 2, and 5, 1. And I can think of them as vectors themselves, in the sense that they are position vectors. And a position vector I've calculated over here for you, right? This is a position vector. And the vector A here, we have to have a position vector, is just the vector goes from the origin to A. So it's the coordinates of A minus the coordinates of the origin, which is just 0, so it's 3, negative 2. I want to mention something on the notation on these. We'll write this as 3, negative 2, and sometimes you'll see it like this. 3i hat minus 2j hat. These are unit vectors, a and j, in the direction of the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis. So i is 1, 0, and j is 0, 1. This has been combined with a unit vector in the third dimension, the z direction, which gets a k hat on it. And so you'd see something written as 3, negative 2, is sometimes gets interpreted as 3i minus 2j. That's especially interesting, not for our stuff today, but for when it, later on you'll get to something called a cross product. Later on, by later on, I mean after this course. In we don't even cover it in Calc two. It's get covered in Calc three, which is quite a while along the road for you. But at that point, we need to be able to work with it. You'll end up with a determinant of three by three, where it has i, j, k, and then two vectors, and the cross product is the determinant of the vector, the term matrix. Okay, so anyway, we're back at B minus A. Now, B, everybody can recognize now as 5. And so I'm going to write it as 5, 1. What's A, guys? What's negative A? So let me get the coordinates for negative A so I can see everybody's with me. Negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 2. Okay, this, that's fine. That that works. That's works. Negative 3, 2 with the parentheses, with the period instead of the comma, or whatever like that. That's the idea. You got this. Good. And see, that's very easy to calculate. And so instead of subtracting, now I have B and negative A, and I'm going to add. And adding two vectors is just absolutely simple. You just add the coordinates. 5, negative 3, 1 plus 2. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And there is the vector V equal to AB. All right? Yeah. There's no particular reason we have to stop at two dimensions. And in particular, I want to start off, start us off here by demystifying extra dimensions. In math, extra dimensions just add more commas. That's all it is. And maybe we can't draw a picture of this thing for space, but you can do all the calculations and we can see things from the calculations that allow us to be able to understand it better. Okay? So again, I'm going to calculate B and from a vector starting at A, heading for B. A is tail, B is head. And I'm going to do it in the usual way, saying just B minus A, or B plus negative A. So here, B is just what you see. 5, 0, 6, negative 7. And now I'm not going to subtract A. I'm going to add negative A because that's easier. It's much easier as a thing which avoids signers, which can definitely happen really easily if you're not careful. They have to be all the time. So let's do this. What's negative A? What's the coordinates of negative A, guys? I 
want the chord negative A. To give me an idea that we're actually watching and paying attention and all that. Negative A, guys. Uh, one second answer. Don't worry about parentheses. Plug it in any old way. Okay, you don't have to do it pretty. <clears throat> but yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I'm changing the sum negative positive 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 negative positive. There we go. Am I chopping? Anthony? Am I chopping? Anyone else? Am I chopping? Okay. A little. Okay. A bit. Can you understand me okay right now? Okay. Okay. Not that much, okay. But if it gets to the point when I can't, where you can't follow what I'm saying, that's when I need to like just pause until the congestion ends. Okay, so here we went from negative, positive, negative, positive to positive, negative, positive, negative. Yeah, like walking time. It's, it shouldn't be. It should be just clear, just clear. There's no reason for this to be choppy like that. This is like a phone call. You shouldn't expect your phone calls to be choppy, right? Yeah. And the video is pretty much just staying in one spot, so it's not using a lot of bandwidth for that. Okay, so we'll work with what we got here. So this becomes 1, negative 2, 3, negative 4, and now there's static in the background. Okay. Hmm. Maybe a little bit you're getting from my air conditioner. I'm going to turn off my air conditioner for a little bit. And that will quiet things around a little bit here. I'm going to have to turn it back on again after a while because it's going to become unbearable. It will become unbearable in here really quickly. But I'll live with it as long as I can just to keep the sound quieter for you. Okay? All right. So here we go, guys. I'm going to add B to negative A, coordinate by coordinate, 5 plus 1 is, and this is my vector V now, it's B minus A, whoa, it gets fat fast in here, 5 plus 1 is 6, 0 plus negative 2, 6 plus 3, negative 7 minus 4, there we go, there's my V. So there you go, there's a calculation in floor space. And when you did uh, found negative A, you did a calculation in floor space too. So there you go, guys. Um, all those people talking about extra dimensions, now you can like wow them because today you did calculation in floor space, yay. <laughs> so let them continue to think that's really complicated. All right. So let's go on. This is the basics right there. You're going from A to B, you just do the subtraction. Now let's say that we have vectors V and W. Okay, so here we go, guys. If I have two vectors V and W, okay, I can cal calculate new vectors from them. So here I have vectors V and W. Now the obvious things I can do is I can calculate negative V and negative W. Here would be negative V, here's V, here's negative V, here's W, here's negative W. Of course, negative W and V and negative V and W, all of these are free vectors, which means I can place them anywhere. If this is vector W, then so is this. If this is vector negative W, then so is this. If this is vector v, this is vector v. And so amongst other things, I can see where v plus w is. I can either start from v and add w, bring myself to v plus w, or I can start with w and add v, because it's symmetric, right? Similarly, I can add go from the top of v and add negative w to find the difference v minus w. So these are just wonderfully geometric and they're easy to see. All right, so there's my vectors V and W that start in places A and B originally, and then we just kind of let it be free to wander around the plane. 
and then I combine them by putting the heads next to the tails. Now, let's do linear combinations. This many of those plus those many of those with two vectors in three space. And this time I put them in the hat notation, three i hat minus four j hat plus two k hat. Where again, i here is the unit vector in the x direction, in three space now, one, zero, zero, right? j hat is the unit vector in the y direction, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, okay? And k hat is the unit vector in the z direction, 0, 0, 1. Just like that, okay? Of course, that's like way too ugly to look at in comparison to just the coordinates form. Yeah, zero, zero, one, right? And so it's easier just to work with three, negative four, two in the coordinate form, which I can recognize as three times one, zero, zero, plus negative four times zero, one, zero, plus two times zero, zero, one. That's way too awkward. And so I'm going to write these in the coordinate form over here, and we do the calculation from there while recognizing if I see it in the literature, or if I see it later on with another course, this is the same thing as i hat, j hat, k hat, i hat, j hat, k hat, multiply here. Okay, so given these two vectors, v and w, I want to find 3v minus 7w. And the rule says just take the scalars on both of them and scale them up. Okay, guys, so given the vectors that we see here, this is enough. What is 3v? Somebody tell me what 3v is. I'll get started by putting a parenthesis here. Work with the coordinates. What's 3v? Nine, negative 12, six. That's exactly how it works, yes. Nine, negative 12, six. You multiply every coordinate by three. And you would do this even if it was a matrix. Even if it was a matrix, you'd multiply every element in the whole matrix. And this is like one row of the matrix, if you will. Any case, so these are very, very simple matrices or just vectors. And I'll see this is nine, negative 12, six. Now let's uh, multiply the second vector by seven. Not by 7, but by negative 7. Multiply all the coordinates in W by negative 7. What do we get? Negative 7W, what's that? 7, negative 14, negative 21. And it's really, it's really unusual to get a sign error when multiplying by negatives. That's really easy, right? 7, negative 14, and 21. And now, instead of like subtracting 7w, I'm going to add negative 7w. See? And then we don't get the sign errors. Pretty good. Negative 21, you're right. Let me go ahead and fix that. Negative 21. I'm melting. I'm going to have to turn the air conditioner on very quickly here. But I'm going to hold off for another minute or so. Because the quiet's nice, too. It just adds reason here. If I open up the windows for the breeze, I get the neighbors. Okay, anyway, so here we go, guys. 3v minus 7w. Just add these two. 3v minus 7w is going to be... What's that? What's that work out to, guys? Somebody add that up for me? In fact, we're subtracting 7w, but we're adding negative 7w. It's the same thing as subtracting. How'd you get 2, Lewis? Oh, we subtracted. No, we're adding. That's the whole point. Yeah. Yeah, so we just add 
9 and 7 to get 16. And yeah, so it, this eliminates a lot of basic arithmetic. And yeah, even with this right there, it's so easy to get arithmetic errors. W is going to be negative 15. The W part, um, in, sorry, sorry, the third coordinate is going to be negative 15. And it's really easy, even just with this, after we simplified getting rid of a lot of arithmetic errors. 9 plus 7 is 16. Negative 12 plus negative 14 is negative 26. And negative 21, 6 plus negative 21 is going to be negative 15. Negative 15. So there we go. Yeah, so this right there will eliminate, but it won't eliminate every sign error, but it eliminates an opportunity to make extra sign errors. So there you are. That helps out some. Okay. Now we've done it in three dimensions. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now in four dimensions as the last example for linear combinations. This time, yeah, uh, this time I want V minus 5w, v minus 5w, okay, I want v minus 5w, okay, so first thing I want is v, which is just, the, does nothing change, right, 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 5w, Minus 5w, what's minus 5 times w? 5, 10, 15, 20 with the right signs, right? Negative, positive, positive, negative. 5, 10, 15, 20 with negative, positive, positive, negative. Yeah, one at a time, negative 5, positive 10, positive 15, negative 20. We'll add those for another calculation in four space, making this whole feel real proud. One minus five, one at a time, one minus five. One minus five, negative four. Yeah, that's five, that's negative five W. Good, thank you, Daniel. Okay. One, now I'm gonna do V minus five W in this row. Okay, that's going to be negative 4, and then what? Negative 4. Air conditioner is going back on. 11. Whew. And then what, 16? 16 is easy. How about the last one? What's that? Last one is what? Sorry, there's the air conditioner coming back on. But I was dying. Negative 19. There we go. Okay, and did I just see Patricia? No, I didn't see Patricia. Uh, I thought I saw Patricia. Oh, well. Get myself excited. Okay. Negative 4, 11, 6. And so, so there we go, guys. We've done some arithmetic in 3D and 4D. And there is no extension on the IJK for four dimensions. They just kind of stop there. IJK, I for the X direction, J for the K direction and J for the Y direction and K for the Z direction. Okay, so there we go. That's sums and differences and linear combinations of vectors in their coordinate form. So now, as I mentioned, these vectors are characterized by a length and a direction, okay? The length of the vector is sometimes called its magnitude. Sometimes it's called its norm. Okay? And generally, we think of these vectors when we're writing this out in this kind of polar form. As you start off looking at a unit, as a, as a unit circle, and then we kind of go past the unit circle, we look at the vector right there, and then we cut out a unit circle on this so we can see things are happening. In this sense, the vector can be described by knowing how long it is and the angle it makes with the positive x-axis. 
okay? In that sense, on the unit circle, we're cosine theta, sine theta, and I want to see where V was as it crossed through the unit circle, and we know the values that are cosine theta, sine theta in X, Y coordinates, right? Now, the magnitude of V, the length of V, you can get that from its coordinates, but I want to look at today um, just by squaring the coordinates, right? But one of the useful things we can do with this, we can use the dot product to do that. And the norm of V is coming from, going to come from this dot product. And I'm going to do some examples using the dot product on this very simple form and take it from there. And from there, we're going to create the unit vector in the direction of V. Now, in normal course of events, we would use U's and V's. We would, if I was typesetting us, I would normally put them in bold face. If it's not in bold face, the, the normal thing to do is to put a bar on top of it, like the magnitude of V, the magnitude of V, and vector V, like this. And that gets really annoying. And so what generally happens is we just drop all the V's and go from there. Just drop all the V's and go from there and work with it as best we can. Okay? And the usual sense that if it's implied, we don't bother writing it if it's already implied. So often just write u sub v. u is the unit vector, u sub v is the unit vector in the direction of v, and we have formulas for these. Okay? So, what we have is the length of V is going to be given by this square root of the dot product. Okay. And then to find the unit vector in the direction of V, we take V and we just divide it by its length. So if the length was 7 and we divided all the coordinates by 7, I would now have a vector of length 1 which is what we mean by unit vector. So the way to find a unit vector in a particular direction is just divide by the length of the vector in that direction. And that's what we're going to do. And the dot product gives me a real easy way to calculate the length the normal way you think it, right? So here's a vector, 3, negative 4. And this one, you should be able to tell me what the length is just at a glance, because this is one of our standard Pythagorean triples. What's the length of V if the coordinates are 3 and negative 4? Everybody see it? Like 5, 5, 5. That's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? Yeah, everybody sees that. The length of V is 5. Whether I put the bar on top of the V or not. Okay, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? So no, we the length of v is 5, and so no, the unit vector in the direction of v is just 3, negative 4, the original vector, divided by 5. Yeah? That's all there is to it. Okay? Now, let's look at the dot product on this. And dot products... are a variation on multiplication. The difference is, this is a way of multiplying vectors that doesn't give you a vector as a response. The dot product of two vectors is just a number, a scalar. Okay? Dot product of two, number, of two vectors is just a, a scalar. Whereas there's another product of vectors that still gives you a vector, that gives you a vector in return. It's called the cross product. And we're not going to work with that here. But you will work with it later. And it's useful for like finding areas of parallelograms. 
Okay, here we go, guys. Now, here's how we calculate the dot product. Okay, I've introduced it to you briefly before. But let's go ahead and say it again. Now, for the dot product here, what's the product of 3 times 3? Okay. And what's the product of negative 4 times 4? 16. Okay. Now, your natural inclination right now would be to drop a comma between these two and call it a vector. And that's just what we don't want to do. Instead of, instead of dropping a comma between them, replace the comma with a plus sign. And you see what happens? I started with two vectors. I'm going to get up a number. And the numbers come from multiplying in place the way you expect right there. But then we add those two products, and you get 25. And you see what's happened here, guys? The length of V is given by the square root of the dot product. It's the square root of the dot part is V, OK? So we can see here from this, right, that the length of V, its magnitude, is given by the square root of its dot product with itself. OK, that's how that works. So I can think of uv as the square roots of uh, uh, the unit vector in the direction of v. Let me, let me frame this out again so we can see where we're at. OK, here we go. So I can think of the length the dot product as just the original vector divided by its length, OK? And yes, normally I'd write this as 3 fifths, negative 4 fifths. But I don't see any reason why I have to do that. The division happens in each coordinate, OK? And But I can also see this, the unit vector, as the original vector v divided by divided by the square root of its dot product. The square root of v dot v. So here we go, guys. Let's try one in free space now. Now, I can find the length without any trouble, right? It's um, to find the length in three space, you just add up all the squares and take the square root. To find the length in four space, you add up all the squares and take the square root. In five space, no matter how many dimensions you are, you just add up all the squares. And once you take it, added up all the squares, you take the square root. So, and of course, I want to point out here that taking the dot product gives you the squares, right? Because as you multiply a, a vector, a dot product with, a, with itself, what naturally comes out are the squares. The 1.1, one one, let me freeze my frame here as soon as I get this in the spot where I want, with the right number of real estate. There we go. Okay. And so when I do the dot product here, the squares come out naturally. 1 times 1 is just 1 squared, plus... And remember, because we're not going to, when we do the dot product, the commas that we normally want to write become plus signs. So we're not going to have a comma here, we're going to have a plus sign. Negative 2 times negative 2, that's just the square. What's negative 2 times negative 2? That should be easy, right? 4, yes. And then the rest of it, as Daniel suggests, is going to be plus 4 again, which totals up to 9, which is not an accident that it comes out to a perfect square. I did that on purpose. So what's the length of V, guys? What is the length of V? The dot product is 9. What's the length? 3. So the length of V, the magnitude of V, the norm of V is 3. 
And so the unit vector in the direction of V is the original V, right, divided by three, which I can then write if I bring it in as one third, negative two thirds, two thirds. Okay, now let's go back to that, that, that example we just left. Okay, let me get framed at the same time so we can do this the same thing. Okay. Now, on this original vector over here on this other side, we ended up with the unit vector in the direction of V given as what? 3, negative 4 over 5, right? Equals 3 fifths. Yes, I'll fix that parenthesis. And yes, I will fix that parenthesis. Equals three fifths, negative four fifths. Okay. Now here is the interesting thing. Okay. This is a point on a unit circle because this is a vector of length one, and every vector on length one as a head that's on the unit circle. The tail put at the origin and the head will be on the unit circle. Okay. And if it's on the unit circle, that means this is equal to cosine of the angle the vector makes with the unit circle and the sine of the angle that it makes with the unit circle. Now I'm going to move this around here a little bit so that we can expand this three dimensions as we need to, as many dimensions as we like. Now I want to point out that theta is the angle that the vector makes with the x-axis. The complement of theta, which we generally call phi, okay? is the angle that the vector makes with the positive y axis. And this is where theta and phi are complementary angles. But we can actually say this directly by using a subscript and talking about theta sub x, let me zoom this in so you can see it better, theta sub x as the angle the vector makes with the x-axis, and now specifically talk about this as a theta sub y as the angle this makes with the positive y-axis. In this sense, what we've just calculated over here in the three-dimensional space, now translates immediately to the cosine of the angle the vector in three space makes with the x-axis. And the cosine of the angle in three space that the vector makes with the y-axis. And the cosine of the angle theta sub z that the vector makes with the positive z axis. These are called directional tones. And they apply no matter how many dimensions we work with. Okay? If you think of a general vector out in three space, yeah. It's going to have a particular angle. It's not going to be like on a plane, but it'll have an angle with the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis. And that angle is going to have a cosine. And as it, that vector passes through the unit sphere, the unit sphere, and we generalize sphere to ball when we're working with a, a more than dimensions than that. We have a three ball and a four ball. In fact, the two ball is just a circle. 
and the three balls of sphere, and then we have hyperspheres past that. So here, the angle that this vector, this one negative two, made with the unit circle, with the y-axis, for example, it was the arc cosine of negative two thirds. Okay, there we go. Let me stop for just a second here and if we have just a basic understanding on this, okay? Guys, without using your calculator, tell me whether the angle this vector makes with a positive y-axis is more than or less than 90 degrees without using your calculator using your calculator. I will give you a hint. I will give you a hint. There's my hint. Is this angle more than 90 degrees and it's obtuse or less than 90 degrees and it's acute? Is it obtuse, more than 90 degrees, or acute, more than 90? And then he says that either because he plugged into a calculator or because he saw the negative sign and understood what that meant. Remember, God, remember that cosine is an X thing. Okay, cosine is an X thing. Sorry. We don't want cosine of the next thing, right? Yeah. And for next things, the arc cosine is going to give you things between 0 and 180. And the positive cosines are your acute angles. And the negative cosines are going to be two angles. That's it. And this is one of those things you should be able to tell at a glance. And when you use the law of cosines and your a squared plus b squared minus c squared shows up as a negative, you know that angle that you're the law of cosines could be obtuse. And your a squared plus b squared minus c squared comes out positive, you know your angle is going to be acute. Before you divide by 2ab or anything like that. Yeah, okay. So I want to make sure we have that clear. And now I'm going to look at corner vectors. I want to look at corner vectors. You know what I mean by a corner vector? This is a corner vector. This is a corner vector in space. Now, you know, if you go 1, 1, like 1, 1, the vector 1, 1, that's a corner of the unit box, the unit square, right? And 1, 1, 1 would go 1 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, 1 in the z direction. That would be a corner of the unit cube. And this is a corner of the unit 5 cube. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let's find the unit vector. Let's find the unit vector on this vector. Okay. And I've got you guys at 1230, right? Okay. So we're doing okay. So, first of all, let's V dot V. And this time, I'm not going to bother writing it. Just tell them what V dot V is, guys. This should be really easy to figure out. That is so close. If you had negative one, Joshua, remember when you take the dot product, when you take the dot guys, when you take the dot product, replace the comma with plus sign. Now, exactly that calculation you just did, but now replace your commas that you didn't put in with a sign. Andy, yes. What's the number, Joshua? What's the number? Five. five. Everybody sees now, right? VD is five. Very good. All direction cosines are going to be one fourth.
there is the unit vector in the direction in, in the corner for the corner vector one fifth all of these angles are the same what is this angle what is that angle now you need a calculator so for the corner box the angle is what For the corner box, what's the angle? Oh, I didn't do that right, did I? That's the dot product. I'm so what am I thinking, guys? I'm so sorry. That's the dot product, yes. Let me undo this, okay? That's the dot product. What's the length of this thing, guys? Yeah, that's right, 78. Thank you, guys. And let's go ahead and back and do it right. What's the length of V? I knew there was something wrong. What's the length of V, guys? If the dot product is 5, what's the length of V? Remember, this is just the sum of the squares. Do we have this? Yes, square root of 5. That's right, Randy. Square root of 5. That's for, that's for, that's for the five-dimensional corner, right? Okay, and so the angle here for the corner vector is the arc cosine, and let me stop zooming that across the page. Here we go. 1 over root 5. 1 over root 5. I have 10 of 13 students in right now. I'm missing three, and one of them is Patricia. The angle is what? 63.4 degrees? Somebody's telling me 63.4. Is that right? Is that what you guys get? Okay, good. And that's an approximation, right? Let's try this for 4D. I think you should all be able to see that 4D is pretty easy, right? Root four, yeah? Yes? That should be pretty obvious for the corner box for the corner vector. For the corner vector that should be right, right? What's theta four for the corner box? One half. What's that? One half, what's that? Sixty. Pretty easy. That's one of our standard angles, isn't it? Okay, let's try the 3D corner box. The length is going to be root 3, and the angle is 1 over root 3 arc cosine. What's that? Fifty-four point seven sounds right to me. Fifty-four point seven degrees. There we go. Let's go back to the regular two D that you worked with before. That's going to be root two, isn't it? And that's a principal ratio. But in either case, you can do it. It's forty-five degrees. Yeah. Okay, do you see what's happening to the angles as we go, as we increase the vec increase the number of dimensions? Yeah, in 3D the angle opened up to 54.7, and you can think about that. Yeah, that should make sense to you. If you think of a corner on the two space, and then we lift that into three space, it's going to increase if we do it symmetrically. It's going to increase the amount of angle. And you see, we've passed 60 degrees when we get to 5D, right? And we can see as you increase the number of dimensions, right? We're going to have the arc cosine of 1 over root n, right? And as n goes to infinity, 1 over root n is going to go to 0. 
And as the number of dimensions heads for infinity, the angles, all the angles will head for 90 degrees. Whoa, pretty wild, huh? Not necessarily intuitive, but something that comes out immediately from the calculations, even though you couldn't. As the number of dimensions goes to infinity, guys, any, the corner of the box there is like 90, becomes closer and closer to 90 degrees from every axis. Not necessarily intuitive, but it's something that's obvious as soon as you look at the calculations. Okay? So now, let's do another kind of calculation, which people like to do all the time. And I can see from our time here, we're going to be able to do the, uh, the cosine of the angle between two vectors. But that's just it. Okay? So here's the idea. Here's the actual one of the basic definitions of the dot product. I gave you how to calculate calculate that, and but now I'm going to go ahead and show you another way of working with it. And that's given this uh, the dot product we've calculated, but we can also calculate that we have we can show that the dot product is also equal to the length of the two vectors multiplied time not just directly the direct multiplied but times the cosine of the angle between them now let's consider what that means before we figure out that this is actually true okay let's look at the two extremes what happens if the angle if these things are both in the same direction if the angle between them is zero what is the cosine of zero guys what is the cosine of zero? Somebody tell me what the cosine of zero is. One, yes? One, right? The cosine of zero? Yeah, the arc cosine of one is, is 90 degrees. The arc cosine of one is zero degrees. I'm, so, I'm not sure what was going on there. Yeah, the cosine of zero degrees. If these are both V and W, if V and W are both pointing in the same direction, the cosine is going to be 1. And the dot product of the two vectors is just going to be the product of their two lengths. But now here's the much more interesting and useful thing. What if these two vectors are perpendicular to each other? What if these two vectors are perpendicular to each other? What do you get? What's the What will be the angle if they're both perpendicular to each other, because everybody's put that answer up there. If these two are perpendicular to each other, what's the angle between them? 90 degrees, yes? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? What's the cosine of 90? Yes. If I take zero times anything, what do I get? Zero. If I take zero times anything, I get zero as well, right? So here is one of the first things that you know about the dot product from this formula, as soon as we have identified this formula. One of the first things we know about the dot product is the dot product of two vectors is zero if and only if they're perpendicular. In general, the angle between them is gonna be given by the dot product of the unit vectors or better, just the dot product of two vectors divided by the lengths of those two vectors. I'm going to do a fast proof on this because it's cool and it uses the law of cosines that we just studied. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, I'm going to point it. Here I've got a vector V and a vector W. And I'm going to use these two vectors, V and W to, draw, to construct a triangle. Here is V and here is negative W and here is V plus negative W known as V minus W. V, negative W, and the sum V minus W. Okay, the angle between V and W Okay.
Did I write that right? Okay. Here's the angle between V and W. Now, what happens when I go too fast? And here is the supplement of the angle between V and W. And I'm going to calculate the length of this using these two, okay? I did something wrong with this. I did something wrong with this, and it's bugging me, and I should have done this better. Okay, yes. Hmm. I had that pre-prepared. And there it is, okay? Here's V, there's W. There's V minus W on the side. Or W minus V, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there it is. If this is V, that's W. This is V plus W. This would be V minus W. That's good. Okay, we're good. All right, sorry about that. Here we go. Now we have a triangle with V and W and the difference in V and W, right? And we have also to work with is the law of cosines. Let me plop this in and freeze it up, okay? Now, what does the law of cosines tell us in terms of theta here? Okay, the law of cosines tells me the length of this opposite side squared is equal to the length of the adjacent squared plus the other adjacent squared minus two times their product's lengths times the cosine of the angle between them. Here's the VW cosine theta, okay? But now we also have from the earlier proof that the V minus W, the length, is given by the square root of the dot product of this vector v minus w with itself. So we can equate this thing that came from the law of cosines with the dot product of v and w, which we can now calculate. Because one of the nice things about the dot product is it distributes. The dot product distributes just like any other kind of multiplication which is nice. And so when we look at this, I'm seeing this is V, wait, let me change my color again. This is V dot V minus V dot W minus W dot V plus W dot W. This is V dot V plus W dot W minus 2 V dot W. And there we go, guys. V dot V is the magnitude square. W dot W. I don't know why I did that. That was weird. Is the magnitude squared? We can cancel those. And what do we have left? Negative 2 VW cosine theta, negative 2 V dot W. And that's what we were trying to prove.
length of V, length of W, cosine theta, and that allows us to calculate the angle between two vectors. And we should have time to do at least one example on that in two space, and hopefully enough time to do a second division as well, okay? So first of all, I'm going to find the angle between these two vectors, okay? So let's first off, let's figure out what v dot w is. 1, 1, 2, 2. What's v dot w, guys? What's v dot w? Anybody? Somebody can do this for me, right? What is it? What's v dot w, guys? Okay, first of all, we're not adding. Second of all, we're not commaing. We're creating commas with plus signs. Yes, the products are two and two, and then we replace that comma with a plus sign. This is really standard, and this is why I keep on saying this is two plus two. Yeah, I know, it's really easy, because you will see vector times vector, and you expect it to be a vector. And so it needs to be reinforced again and again. It's four, right? Okay. And now, guys, because it's easier, what's the length of V? What's the length of V? And then what's the length of W? The length of V is not two, but the square root of two, right? Root two, yeah? Yeah? Is the dot product square root, yeah? What's the length of W, guys? Root 4 plus 4, root 8, yeah? Yeah? Okay. And so what do we end up with? We end up with V dot W over the lengths. which is going to be what? Um, and the lengths are root and root 8. What's, uh, what do we get here? What do we get here, guys? What do we get? What's that length? V dot W over V W. While you're doing that, I'm going to do some calculations down here. I don't know what it just did. Okay, while you're doing that, yeah. That's not quite what, yes, that's right, it's one. Okay, what's the angle between them, guys? What's the angle between them? What's the angle between them? What's the angle between them? Yep, the angle between them is zero. Look at the one, one, two, two, right? Here's the vector V. I'm sorry. Here's the vector V. And here's the vector W. They're in the same direction, aren't they? Yeah. So the dot part between them was just the product of the two. Yeah, the angle between them was just the product of the two, right? Okay. Now, here we got two that are not in the same direction, okay? And the dot product of the two is 2 plus 1 plus 6 minus 10. That's 3 plus 6 minus 10. That's negative 1, okay? At this point, so 
somebody tell me whether the angle between them is acute or obtuse? The angle between V and W is three space, acute or obtuse. Somebody tell me. V and dot W has a negative, has a negative dot product. Is the angle between them going to be acute or obtuse? Yes, because cosine is an X thing and the negative states up two angles. I'm going to do the lengths here. This is four plus one plus nine plus five square root. Neatly with the square root button. Okay. And the other one is one plus one plus four for square root. Okay, what's that? Five and twenty-five is thirty, that's thirty-nine. So the cosine, the angle between them is negative one. That's the important thing. The lengths are always positive. And so here I'm seeing um ten uh what's that? um 10 plus 29 is 39, right? Root 39 and root um, 10, yeah? Which is negative 1 over root 3, 10. So let me put the angle between these two vectors and the negative 2 we have remaining. What's the angle between two vectors? I know it has to be bigger than 90. What is it? And I did this in full space. All your examples could be like do this to make it easy, right? For this one. What angle do you guys get? What angle do you guys get? That's the last question for today. What's the angle between the two vectors? The angle between the two vectors. I'm looking for somebody to do the calculation for me. You zoom in on the relevant thing. Relevant thing. 93 plus change. 93 change. Yeah, I get 93.255. I calculated that's a little hand for me. That's right anyway. That's how easy it is. Okay. See how easy that was? And we did that in four dimensions. Certainly do it in two dimensions, right? Three dimensions. You can do it in any dimensions now, right? Okay. So the things that I wanted to do were just not going to be able to cover this term was ordinal decomposition, and that's just not going to happen. And so that's just what it is. We don't need that in a way. That was kind of an extra topic. There's any homework on it, but I just need to put it into my head. This was not covered. I'm just going to put that in here. So no, I'm not going to put an exam question. On. I'll put this because I'll review these things later. The answer is not covered. Mac 11:14. It was in my 11:46 this term. Okay. So there we are. Yes, thank you so much for your attention, and I look forward to uh, everybody. Remember that if you didn't like submission on the law of science, law of cosines, you can resubmit any time before midnight today, okay? I look forward to seeing you later and talk to you soon, okay? Bye. Yes, yeah, so I'll be getting everyone here as I can, okay? So, uh, uh, work. Oh, right. Yeah, a great time for the rear tub. Stop my recording.